Okay, I'm sorry, I did not know this video was going to be 30 minutes long when I recorded it. So just like skip ahead in the chapters if you don't want to watch this all, I completely understand, I'm sorry. If you want to skip this part and are only here for the tips, skip to this time. First I want to say thank you for a thousand subs. It's not much, but it's a start and it's a crazy milestone. I wanted to thank you guys by making this tips video since a lot of people have asked me questions about what I use and such. There are also great tips for starting out with stop motion, things I wish I had known. Last thing before the tips though, I also started my music channel. I'll be posting some of my old songs that I made for stop motions over there if you're interested. I also, also dropped a new song, like a never heard before song that's not in any of my videos that I just kind of made for fun. It's kind of experimental, a different one I usually do. But again, thank you for a thousand subs. It's crazy and I only plan to make more. Uh, so now on to the tips. I want to preface this by saying these are tips, not tutorials. I will not be teaching you how to fully animate a fight scene like I do frame by frame. These are solely to help you get started if you already kind of know what you're doing. Tip number one. It's not really a tip, but if you're just now starting out and you only have a phone, use Stop Motion Studio. This is the one like everyone uses, so I imagine you're already using it. But if you're not, use it. I typically do 20 frames per second. But you need to kind of find what you're into. I recommend trying 8 frames, 16 frames, 24 frames, and 30 frames if you're really trying to do it. But I would stick kind of to a lower number. 20 frames is just what I chose when I first started. I've just kind of stuck with it. Whenever you do it for a long time, you kind of learn uh, how to do it for each thing. So if I were to go to 8 frames, I would not be able to use my 20 frames, like, tactics, quote-unquote. So just try to find something you're comfortable with. And whenever you do... Find it, try to stick with it. Tip number two, this one is really important. Get a tripod. I have seen a lot of videos where somebody is taking a picture with their phone in hand, then they'll put their phone down and they'll move the figures and go back and it just, it doesn't look good. I'm sorry, it doesn't look good. It's kind of hard to follow. Just get a tripod and just have it set up. It's way better to do it that way. They're only about like 20 maybe $30. They, they are a worthwhile investment. Please get one. Alongside getting a tripod, you should also get some figure stands and some sticky tack. I have the Tamashii Nations figure stands. These are, they're pretty good for what they are. It's about pack of two for $10 on Amazon. I'm going to try to link them below if I can find them. These are way better than your third party ones that just are very bad. These ones are actually like high quality and they can hold the figures pretty well, but be aware they do kind of fall apart after a little bit, but they are still very worth it. They can help you do a lot more. It's also way better than having to hold them with your hand. Next is like sticky tack. Get this, put it on the bottom of your figures. Uh, it'll help them stay up and stand because sometimes figures just cannot stand on their own. This is really good. It's only two bucks at Walmart, I think, or Hobby Lobby, whichever, probably the same. Get this, very helpful. The last things I would recommend even getting is a soldering kit, some lamps, and a large flat area. Soldering kit, I like to attach to the bottom of some figure's legs to really hold them in place. It's probably not the smartest idea, but it still works. I recommend doing this on like cheaper figures or figures you don't really care about. Obviously you're going to need some lamps because natural sunlight just does not look good. And lastly, I got these two large flat boards from Lowe's. Having a large flat area gives you a lot of room to play around in and mess around with rather than just a small table. So if you can, I would recommend getting this or at least get one large plastic table from like Walmart. Those are also really good. Next, you're going to want to learn about easing in and easing out. Easing in is when your character slowly gains momentum over time and easing out is the exact same way but backwards. Doing this will make your animations a lot smoother. Let's take a look at this example. As you can see in this clip, as Yuta moves his arm up or out, the frames get further away from each other until he reaches a max point. Then they slow down again, coming to a stop. Doing this will make your punches look more fluid, but also have more power behind them. To also make sure your figures have more punch, rotating them at the hips or the abdomen will give them more punch and power behind it, rather than them just staying completely still. Keeping your figure completely still does not look as good. Even if you're just moving the legs slightly forward or rotating the figure left or right, it'll definitely give them a lot more power than this, them standing completely still punching forward. 
This though is one of those things I can't exactly teach you. You have to do it on your own over and over again until you eventually understand the pattern and the flow behind it. Eventually you'll get into a rhythm of knowing how this is and you'll be able to make punches real easy. But you also can't forget about the person taking the punch. They also have to move, not just their face or their body, but you also have to move their arms so it looks like they're moving with the punch. Knowing how to do this will make your videos 10 times better. It'll look like an actual punch rather than a slap. Sometimes when you're making a fight scene, it's kind of hard to visualize what you want. So I like to keep two figures on the side and I like to play out the actions or the fight that I want to happen with the figures. It helps me understand what I want to do or maybe it even gets my brain flowing with some cool ideas. It's kind of a dumb tip, but genuinely just having some figures on the side to just play with will help you a lot. It could take your video in a whole different direction that you weren't even expecting. A big tip that genuinely made my videos 10 times better are effect pieces. The Sun Goku effect pieces by Tamashii Nations made my videos so much better. It made the punches look like they had some power behind them. This may be a bit pricey, but having these will make your videos stand out. Even if you don't have the money to make these, making your own could also work. For example, in my Dojo vs. Ace, I just used orange paper for flames. You could also edit in some effects, or if you're using Stop Motion Studio, you can draw them in. That would always work and would definitely add some depth to your videos. Adding some small effects will definitely help. Now this is more of a mental tip rather than a physical tip, but when you're making stop motions, especially when you first start, just keep making videos over and over again, even if they're just three seconds long. You will see yourself improving and your videos will look better. You may even learn something new that you could use in your later videos, like how I had to learn how easing in and easing out work. And I learned this just by making videos. There are so many videos that I have made that you guys haven't seen because they were just test videos. And hell, if you want to, you can just upload your test videos. Maybe even when you upload this test video, you can look for tips or, or ask other people what they think of this. And if you keep working, you will see change. Look at my old videos for when I first started compared to what I'm making now. There is definitely a big step up. And this one kind of goes with tip six, but for tip seven, just try out new things. You may want to try out like a backflip that you've never done before. And when you do, it might not even look good, but it'll help you understand like, oh, okay, right here, I needed more frames rather than less frames. Even if it's just a video of the same character doing a backflip 10 times over, that'll definitely help you understand. And then whenever you make an actual video, your flips will look a lot better. Obviously, this isn't just for flips. This would be very useful for running or just walking. I did not know how to do a running animation until kind of recently when I just wanted to try it out. I made a three second video of a character running and now I know how to do it because I just practiced it. It may sound silly, but really just sit down and make a quick three second stop motion of something you want to try and just keep doing that over and over again until you learn it. It will genuinely help. Even if you only have like 15 minutes to sit down, those 15 minutes could be very useful to you. Another big mental thing is when you're starting out, your videos don't need to make sense. They don't need to be super high quality. People are going to comment this would not happen in actuality. Just ignore them. I have made countless videos where things did not make sense and people commented it, but it does not take away from the video. You should be making your video for fun rather than what you think would actually happen in an actual sense like this. Two examples I can immediately think of are my first couple videos in my series where Diego, Dio, and part one Dio are all in the same video and, and Dio is punching golden experience. Obviously that would not make sense, but for the sake of the video, it was entertaining. Another big one, Sukuna versus the Straw Hats. I think it's almost obvious what would actually happen in that actual fight, but I wanted to make it more fun and think, oh, what would, what would it look like if the Straw Hats beat Sakuna very easily and, and Chopper got the last punch for fun? I didn't do that because I genuinely thought the Straw Hats would won. I did that because I thought it would be a funny video. It also gave me a lot of chances to, to mess around with some figures like Brooke or Frankie. Again, stop motion should be fun. You do what you want to do, even if it doesn't make sense. So if you do see a comment saying something like, oh, this wouldn't make sense, or something along those lines, just ignore them. This tip kind of goes along with the last one, but just ignore all kind of hate. When you're starting, your videos might not look good, and people are going to let you know. 
Or alternatively, like I just said, they may say something like, this is stupid, this would not actually happen. Just ignore them. Don't pay in peace of mind. Don't respond to their comment. Don't like the comment. Don't dislike the comment. Whatever. Just ignore it. It'll also just look better on you. If you're coming out as a negative person responding to every hate comment, people are going to notice that. Alternatively, to go alongside with this, be a nicer person. When you see a very positive comment, like the comment. If somebody asks you a simple question, respond to it. Or if somebody says, hey, this video is great, comment saying thanks. Just overall being nicer is just, it feels better to be nicer on the internet. I know, what a weird thing to say. But also just being nicer and, and branching out, you might see some people that you normally see come back to your videos and comment like, hey, this is awesome. And you may even make like a small friend group out just because you made some stop motion videos. There are a lot of people that I have seen on like Instagram or YouTube over and over again because they keep coming back to my videos and then I watch their videos and it's they go hand in hand. Or if you're on YouTube and you see a 10 second stop motion, click it and watch it and, and give the person some tips or like say, hey, this was a cool video. It may motivate the person to make another video. Overall, just being positive in the stop motion community is just, I don't know, just do it. All right, back to actual tips. When it comes to editing, you can use Stop Motion Studio. Stop Motion Studio is a decent editor. You can add in effects or you can add in like a green screen. I'm pretty sure you can even record audio, but I've never used that to record audio. But one program I used to use is Clipchamp. You can download this for free off of Windows and it is a pretty good alternative if you don't have money for Premiere Pro or Sony Vegas. It's not the best thing in the world and it does have some bugs and glitches that kind of might ruin your video, but overall it could help you might be able to add some text or you might be able to just add clips together. And even though it's just a simple editor, it's still good to have the option to like add music or easily add sound effects from your computer. Clipchamp is what I used to use in the beginning and it is very simple and very easy to learn. I would highly recommend this if you're starting out and you don't have the money for Premiere Pro or Sony Vegas or any other editing software. Tip 10. When you're first making videos, you might not know what you want to do for a fight or you might not have any inspiration. So I would recommend recreating scenes that you like from different movies or different shows. Recreating them frame by frame, even if it's with different characters. One of my first little videos was a recreation of fights or little animations from one of my favorite games, Midnight Fight Express. That game has a lot of good choreography and it helped me learn a lot of things. So I just picked out some of my favorites and I just recreated them frame by frame. One way you can do frame by frame is by using Premiere Pro and scrubbing by each frame, which I would highly recommend. Or you can go to YouTube and use the arrow keys and scroll frame by frame. Or lastly, you can go to a website that I used to use called Frame by Frame. It's exactly what it sounds like. You put in a video and you can move by frame by frame. Recreating frame by frame can help you learn how animation works or like easing in and out like we mentioned earlier. Or it can help you get some ideas for later videos that you might want to use. Like, oh, this guy did a cool kickflip thing. I'm going to try to recreate that later. Or you could even just recreate a fight from like Naruto. I always see Sasuke versus Naruto Final Battle, which is fun. You can try recreating a fight scene like that. You could maybe even put your own spin on it. Again, this is a good way to start when you're just making videos and you're not entirely sure what you want to do. Tip 11 is a big one that I really don't even follow myself is don't feel like you need to upload or have a schedule. I used to try and upload once every other week. Sometimes I would even upload once every week. You may feel pressured that people are going to unsubscribe if you don't upload fast enough. And honestly, some people might, but you just kind of have to look past that. You will grow more than you will shrink. So take your time with a stop motion. If you're working on something, you're just like, this does not look good or I need more time. Don't feel like you need a schedule because then you'll be put in this unhealthy mindset where you'll be like, oh, I only have three days left to make this video and I'm nowhere near done. And then you'll rush it and it just won't look good. Again, this is something that I kind of even struggle with myself, but if I genuinely just don't want to work on a video, I just don't work on a video. It's better to not work on a video than to rush something and have it look bad, especially when you're starting. Do not give yourself a schedule or don't give yourself a harsh schedule. Maybe try to make a video in a week, but if you can't, extend that time out. I would honestly say having a soft schedule is better than having a hard schedule because then it's more flexible and you can try to make a video in that time frame. But if you can't, it's fine. Just 
Do what you can in a certain amount of time. Tip 12 is a big one. Find a niche to start with. My first videos were JoJo stop motions, and that's what I was eventually going to do before I kind of went off the rails onto my own series and got to where I am now. But if you're doing just like Dragon Ball, Goku versus Vegeta, you know, everyone's done that. Or Goju versus Sukuna, you know, again, everyone's done that, which is not bad. But if you do something that's different, more people will probably want to watch it. Again, JoJo stop motions was what I started on because there's not a lot out there and I had a lot of the figures, so I said, why not do it? It also gave me a lot more opportunity to uh, mess around with some things I've never messed around with before, like stands. Stands is a interesting thing to mess around with when you're doing stop motion. And you never know, you may be like the JoJo stop motion guy, and if you're the JoJo stop motion guy, you may be getting more views because JoJo fans are coming in to watch this JoJo stop motion, even though they don't watch stop motion. Again, even if your niche is like Roblox stop motions with those little Roblox figures, at least it's something. Again, even though I broke out of this and I don't really do JoJo stop motions as much, or really just at all, it gave me a good start. It helped me build up a little bit of a fan base to keep going with. Tip 13. Make something people want to see, but don't take requests. You're probably wondering, what does that mean? Well, for example, recently I just did a poll asking what people wanted to see. It was between Itadori and Sukuna versus Itadori and a lot of other characters. So I let the people vote and they wanted to see Itadori versus a lot of characters. So I started doing that. But about halfway through the video I was like, I don't want to do this. This is terrible. This is frustrating. I would much rather do Itadori versus Sukuna. But I didn't want to scrap the video because I felt pressured that people were going to be upset that I asked them what they wanted and they didn't get it. So I eventually just kind of went both ways I gave them both Itadori and Sukuna versus Itadori and all these other characters. But if you ask and you get something you don't want, you're going to feel pressured that you have to complete it or you're going to feel bad for scrapping it. So I would highly recommend doing what you want to do rather than what they want to see. Plus, people will probably still watch your video no matter what it is, especially if you're good at stop motion. But make something people want to see, what do you mean by that? Well, you're going to want to do something interesting. Like, Goku versus Itadori. You know, something that will kind of be like, oh, I wonder who would win in this fight. Gojo versus Ace was my first real big video that kind of blew up, and probably because people were like, well, who would win this? Or this is a really interesting matchup. Or Sukuna versus Straw Hats. Again, another interesting matchup that people were probably like, who would win this? Which kind of plays in the tip 14, people want to watch cool, fun things. Not like The Miz versus Iron Man. I'm sure some people would watch that, but people are going to be less likely to click on that because it's two uninteresting characters or it's just like a not very interesting matchup, which kind of plays into what you're titling the video. You know, you got to make sure the title is interesting. You got to make sure the characters that are fighting are interesting. And also like the characters that you choose, the fight has to use both of their abilities. You can't just do punch, punch, kick, punch, punch, kick. People really aren't going to want to watch that. So you have to make it interesting. So again, I would personally say don't take requests, but do what people want to see. Again, I know that is kind of like very vague or very weird. They kind of go hand in hand. But when you're making the videos, trust me, you'll understand just by looking at your uh, views and your, and your likes and your comments and all that. Seeing which videos get more views and which videos don't. Which again is another thing that you just kind of have to learn on your own. Seeing what people like and seeing what people don't like. But out of my experience... More fun characters like Gojo versus Goku is more fun than two random characters that nobody wants to see. So for this tip, tip 15, I would say aim for longer videos, around two to three minutes. That's where I usually get my videos, and though it does take a long time, having a longer stop motion is definitely more interesting. A 20 second fight, you can't really get a lot done in 20 seconds, but if you build it up over two minutes, there can be a lot more fun things that happen. Again, even though the video will be harder to make, it'll be more fun or more interesting and more people will probably want to come back for it. You can show off more of what you're capable of rather than just one big attack that is mainly effects. Again, 20 second videos can be fun or if you're trying to make a 20 second video like on purpose, that can work. But typically to two to three minutes, especially of a full fight, is definitely a lot more fun. You can play around a lot more. It can show what you're capable of. So again, I would try to aim for two to three minutes. That's typically where I land in the ballpark, but even one minute could work. Tip 16, this one kind of goes in with the last 
two or three tips, the fights have to be interesting. They have to adapt over time. As the fight goes on, they have to, instead of just going for a punch, 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 they kind of have to, like, get real big explosive attacks or the characters jumping off of walls and doing all sorts of backflips or the choreography is insane. To get some inspiration for this or to really understand, I would recommend watching fights from shows, movies, or animes, like I said earlier. John Wick is my all-time favorite movie because of just the choreography in that, and it really inspires me to do a lot. If you haven't seen John Wick 1 through 4, I would highly recommend watching those. But people are going to get bored if it's just punch, punch, kick, punch, punch, kick, with no moving environment or no characters moving over a long period of time. Again, maybe having the characters power up or maybe making the environment adaptable will definitely make the video a lot more entertaining to watch. Last tip, and this is the most important one, do not overwork yourself. Even if you're only working on a video for an hour a day, that's better than overworking on a video than no longer enjoying stop motion making. There was a time that I took a long break and I didn't make any videos because I was tired of working on one single video. I was overworking myself and I just wasn't having fun. So like you don't want to overwork yourself, but you also don't want to work on a video that you hate. This kind of goes back to like, don't set expectations for what you're going to make because you could be making a video and halfway through you don't want to work on it anymore. You want to scrap it. But because you promised it, you kind of got to keep making it and you'll be working on a video you don't want to work on. I actually have a video coming out real soon that I was working on for a while, but as I was working on it, I hated working on it. I didn't want to use the figures. I wanted to scrap it. So I eventually just stopped. I took a long break from stop motion and I kind of lost a lot of time. When I finally came back, I tried reworking on the video and I still hated it. So I just scrapped the video entirely. And ever since then, I have been working on stop motions every week, trying to make a new video every time I can. It's because I didn't overwork myself or it's because I... I enjoyed making the stop motions that I was making rather than working on a video I didn't want to work on. Stop motion is a hobby. You should be doing it for fun. It shouldn't be frustrating to you. You shouldn't be doing it and hating it the entire time. So again, make what you want to make. Make what you would watch. Make something that was fun for you to make. And don't overwork yourself. You will regret it. All right, that's all the tips I have now. Um, I know it's probably not what you guys were expecting and you're probably hoping for a bit more of a tutorial, but I just, as I said before, I don't feel like I'm in the right place to be making tutorials considering I only reached a thousand subscribers. Maybe sometime in the future I will make tutorials on how to actually like do a running animation or how I do my punches myself. But for now, these are just all you're gonna have to deal with. Again, for starters, these are really good tips and I would genuinely recommend listening to them because they can actually help you improve your videos. Again, there's a lot of people out there that use their hands instead of a tripod, and I genuinely think if they just put their phone down in one single spot, it would look a lot better. Or instead of moving the figures with your hand and having your giant hand in the way, it would definitely look a lot better if it was like a clear, almost translucent stand. It would kind of take away from the giant hand being in the way. And also, lastly, there's a lot of 20-second videos out there that I think would be a lot more fun if that person had put more time into it making a two minute video rather than 20 seconds because again there's a lot of really good stop motion creators out there that i think have a lot of potential to make really good videos i've seen people that have 20 second videos that have like no videos on their channel but they have really good stop motions and like probably better than mine i'm not saying mine are the best but like stop motion is actually pretty easy to make and I genuinely believe this when I say that stop motion is something anyone can do and anyone be can become good at. I think if you just put the time and effort into making really decent two to three minute videos that look good, that flow well, have really good choreography, you can become a good stop motion channel. And you know, as you're doing this, you'll be learning how to get better. You'll be making better videos and you'll be getting more subscribers on YouTube and boom, you just have a career just doing stop motions now. All because you just made longer videos because you put the time and money into like these small stands or a tripod. Again, I know these aren't the greatest tips and a lot of them are just eye rolls like, oh yeah, obviously do this or obviously do that. But like, there are things I wish I had known, especially the first couple of tips like, oh, buy this or buy that. They, I wish I would have known that to make my couple first videos better. So, I mean, lastly, just take some of these. Like, you might not be able to use all of them, but just if I had to recommend any tips, it would be don't overwork yourself, buy the tripod, and buy the stand and stick attack. Everything else is all up to you. You should not be following like what I do exactly. But if you aren't satisfied and you 
want a different question answered or something that I might not have answered, comment it down below. I'm, I will probably respond to the question. Or, you know, shoot me a DM on Instagram, which is linked in the description. Shoot me a DM on there. I will respond. I will probably give you a longer answer. Or if you're asking for something real niche, I may even send you a video of me explaining it better or me showing it off, you know. So just ask or whatever. Again, thank you for a thousand subscribers. And also, remember my music channel is linked if you are interested. I do have another video coming out soon. So I hope you watch that when it comes out. Thank you guys.